Hey, this is human. This is Nevin. So what I really like about pufferfish is that you get to learn public speaking in a really fun way. Pufferfish really, really did change my life. These sessions are very informative and enjoyable. I used to be scared and nervous, but now I'm not. Not even a little bit. All three of my coaches, they are amazing. You could just laugh your head off whenever the coach cracks a joke. They're super funny. They're really friendly. The time is like flying when you get to be with them. 
And what I like about the FB Live is that people even do done going live on Facebook. You feel proud of yourself. So join our international community. Thank you. As a coach, when you work with children, you identify your learning patterns on how they can be taught. You put effort on talent, it becomes a skill. My ambition is to become an army officer. The ambition gives us the direction. I think by becoming an army officer, I can do a lot to save my country. When we have a clear ambition, we can find the proper guidance. It is not easy to achieve anything in this world without effort. However, we must keep on our own attention to select the right decision. It is always best to set high goals to get there. As we are children, this is a big confusion among us. And each and every young learner's learning pattern is different. They work on based on emotion. Well, I would like to thank uh, for just um, because uh, Sandeep has uh, got a remarkable improvement after joining this program. Never underestimate the mind. Hello there, everybody watching us live from all around the world. A very, very good evening to all of you. My name is Shweb Ali, and today I will be doing a quick introduction as to what has been happening on the ICP Junior Law Program. Joining us today in our chat and our milestone evaluation day is Junior Fisher Ayumi Gunasekara, Junior Fisher Chanul Tamisha, Junior Fisher Ditira De Silva, and junior fisher Nevin Baniarachi. And together with us is our law program coach, uh, Fisher Rasha HR. Well, I sincerely hope that all of us are audible and clear for today's discussion. Um, I'm here to quickly give an introduction that these individuals are the ones who are pioneering the learning on the ICP junior law program. Now, why are we learning the law? And why is it that we are having the intensive communications network program to deliver such programs is only mentionable by the learners themselves. I would like to hand over controls to the host who would be quite a very silent host today. That is Rasha HR via the chat, but we'll be getting each and every learner over here to comment and communicate. That is each and every junior Fisher, uh, Ayumi, Chanul Tamisha, Ditira De Silva, and Nevin Vanyarachi. I just have a quick question from Nevin Vanyarachi. If he can give me a few seconds on this thought. Nevin, have you been enjoying the program? Yes, very much. Excellent. Chanul Tamisha, any new learnings? Definitely, sir. Every day. All right. Uh, kindly request you to be centered for the best on screen as the banner is over you and it's a little difficult to see you clearly. 
Thank you. Are you Minguna Sekara? Are you enjoying your learning curve? Yes, Kachala. All right, super. Ditri De Silva, it's a pleasure to see you over here. Despite finding a few attendance setbacks, are you Thank sure you. you're geared and ready with all the learning? Of course. Of course, super duper. Somebody has been doing their reading. With that being said, I'm going to hand over all controls to Russia in order to take this to the next step. Of course, I will be around on backstage. Uh, Anderson Haran will be managing the hosting of the particular StreamYard unit. Uh, so Russia will be communicating with you all via the chat box. And let's see how this goes. Over to you, Russia. Okay, so guys, so before we get into deep about this, first let's see what is a government first. So basically, government is the people who have authority to rule a country or a place, and it is the place uh, where people make laws and collect taxes. So, so now, why do we actually need the government? Well, we need the government because governments are really necessary thing for a country to maintain laws and to run the society peacefully. And we need the government to protect human rights. Without the government, I can't imagine what will happen because people will misbehave and do whatever the things that they like. So, and then the country will be in so much trouble. So the government is something that that is actually a really important and necessary thing to have in a country. Well, so have you ever thought what are the functions of the government? So I think in every government in every country that there, there are lots of functions. So in a government, well, some basic functions of the government are to provide leadership. We need good leadership for our country and to grip and to give proper laws and especially to protect the society. For example, during the pandemic, the government kept us kept us safe, uh, taking a risk and they actually had to close down the whole country. And that is uh, something that the government served us like a really huge task. So, so today the topic will be the public trust doctrine. So now the public trust doctrine, how can this connect, to the, connect with the government? So I believe the public trust doctrine is something that is kept for public use, right? And I think that the government, so the government owns this and it is a must for them to protect. And I think it is their duty to protect the public trust doctrine. So that is a small introduction of what we are going to discuss today about the public trust doctrine. Yes, Ayumi. So now, just as my friend here, Ayumi said, public trust doctrine is very important for the government to safeguard because now what public trust doctrine means is the trust of the civilians to the government. Now, I don't mean to confuse you guys by adding a lot of weight into this, but I have no other way to do this. So now let's get serious. When we elect people of the government, now we trust them, right? Now, when we elect, when we elect someone, they say stuff like we'll do this and we'll do that. And we'll also make sure that we do something like this. So now they say stuff like that and we trust them to do that after we elect them. So just because of that, we trust them to do that after they are elected, right? And now when they are elected, after that, we also trust them to do what's right to the country, right? Now we expect them to protect us. We trust them with our security and our expenses and our crops, our food. We trust them with everything that relates to the government, right? So these two are mainly how this trust doctrine can be divided into. 
and now the government uh, should mainly focus on three elements three elements when it comes to this topic um responsibility transparency and accountability right and um for this um i would like to bring in my good friend nevin to explain these three elements right nevin go on thank you chao uh i really can hear you as much uh, sorry i'm having a few connection issues you are a little uh, broken up could you uh, repeat your question oh okay nevin so now um, so far i, ex- I explained um, a few points about the public trust doctrine right and um i stopped off when he, in the three main elements that a government should focus on responsibility transparency and accountability right now we know this and nevin i wish for you to explain to everyone that's watching these three elements so over to you thank you sir so accountability transparency and uh i'm really sorry my connection is not the best but uh hmm let's think so by transparency the transparent so transparency itself is uh being uh, open uh and uh really uh so when it comes to the public trust doctrine uh it's the public's trust so the trust that the public has in the the government so the transparency for this is that the government is i guess you could say the transparent of what they're doing and they they make sure that the public is aware of what they're doing uh, when it comes to some situations and they uh, they try to uh, if it's possible they try to uh, keep sure the society and the public is uh, is noted on that i think that's uh, i think that my take on uh transparency uh, i'm not uh, i think there's a little bit more to cover on that uh and then the next one you said was um responsibility the right. responsibility that the government holds all right so when it comes to responsibility it's not just the responsibility of uh of the people as in uh not just being responsible for the people so when it comes to responsibility it's it involves the the responsibility for taking care of the environment uh, taking care of the people our historical value and everything uh around it and i guess it's uh it's their responsibility so when it comes to a leader every reader a uh, leader has their own responsibility they have their responsibility if that's leading the group or uh leading them to a better path so i think uh when they say responsibility it's not only that to lead the government but it's also the responsibility of uh keeping the public the public trust uh and um i think it's the responsibility of safeguarding the trust the environment and uh i think war and peace and accountability i'm not as sure on but i think accountability might be a little bit on uh how we can also in a way trust or accountability can be how we we count on uh the the government i'm not entirely uh clear on the facts so this era if you could further explain so that i also get a better understanding on this uh please yeah. go ahead sure so we the public have something called sovereignty of the people so when we have an election we give that power to certain representatives in the government so they get this power and in return they have a huge responsibility and we are basically trusting them that while we give them this certain power 
or ability, they are going to keep that trust and they're going to fulfill their duties. So these duties uh, should be checked. And for that, the trust doctrine um, is like one of the most promising legal norms to check if everything is being done properly. So like Chandler and Evin said, there are three main factors the government should consider when fulfilling their duties according to this um, doctorate. So which is transparency, responsibility, accountability. So firstly, when we talk about transparency, uh, transparency, the government should um show the public what's happening they can't keep it secret because the government the the people should be aware they have the right to know what's happening in their country and they shouldn't do anything secretly so that's what they should do in terms of transparency and moving on to responsibility is basically what they should do they should do the things that they have promised and they should do the things that they have to do basically they, uh, to protect the citizens to provide them with necessary facilities education healthcare, and etc and then finally we have the factor accountability so accountability is basically the liability of the government so they should be um answerable if something happens they can't just run away or just ignore these issues they should be yeah i i understand i take full responsibility and i would like to apologize for this and i will take full action to fix this they can't just run away. so that's what accountability is so if the government fulfills all these three factors mainly they will uh, be basically following the trust doctrine and they'll be keeping our trust. So that's what a successful government is. And that's what uh, a good government should do. So over to you, Nevin, uh, to explain a bit more with some examples on how the government has so far kept the trust of uh, the people and how they have maintained the sovereignty and some instances where they may have accidentally broken this trust because everything is not perfect. Over to you. Yes, sir. So as Didier said as well, everything isn't perfect. Sometimes uh, the public trust doctrine as well the trust in that sometimes has also been broken, but sometimes has also been been safeguarded and protected. So one of the uh, one of the examples that I want to bring up is the fortieth Prime Minister of New Zealand, uh, Jacinda Ardern. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, she apologized. Now this wasn't something that uh, her her parliament or her government uh, made a mistake on. Uh, I believe it was the 1970s uh, dawn raids uh, that happened on June 60, uh, 26th uh, at a commemoration event at Auckland uh, Town Hall. So, uh, and I'm not sure the entire full story, but uh, from what I've heard uh, is that uh, this this uh this event that happened uh this not loose uh, not jacinda's government but a different government was in charge at the time and they uh, somehow there was uh, a mistake that they made uh, and they didn't i don't think uh, ended up have, being able to apologize but it wasn't this, uh, jacinda's fault but she did uh for the for the trust of the public she went ahead and apologize uh, for for what happened back when it wasn't even uh, in her control. So that is a good example of how 
the, the public trust doctrine has been, uh, has been protected. So that's, you know, that's, uh, that's hope that uh, it will be protected further on. But that was this uh, conversation me and Dithira had as well, uh, where it wasn't safeguarded and it was, uh, the trust was broken in a way. Uh, it happened here in Sri Lanka. Uh, not sure the accuracy of this, but the Chinese, uh, com- a Chinese company or a Chinese government uh, destroyed some of Sri Lanka's property, or not destroyed, maybe just they dug up uh, a, a village with uh, some historical uh, value uh, here in Sri Lanka. And our government didn't really, didn't really uh, care in a way. They didn't really uh, think about it. They were like, okay, it's been done. And uh, you know what? Why not? Uh, and they didn't really, they didn't really uh, take, take a step into it. And they didn't really uh, try to fix it in a way. There was a lot of historical value. And uh, they destroyed it. Uh, and our governments didn't really say much about it. So... Uh, that's another example of how the public trust uh, doctrine and the trust uh, of the public has been, in a way, destroyed. So it goes both ways. It can either, it sometimes is protected and uh, it's, we can, we're able to trust it. And sometimes they have slip-ups and they, they break our trust. So that is sort of uh, a, a few examples on uh, how it's been safeguarded and how it has. Uh, over to you, Channel, on some more, uh, some more points uh, on this public trust. All right, thank you, Nevin. Now, everyone, as Nevin just, as Nevin gave out a few examples, we could see how important public trust actually is. Now, what happens here is, just as Nevin said, if a, if the government breaks our trust, like we elect the government, we elect the roles of the government for a reason, right? We trust them to do something good. And if they immediately do something bad and they'll break our trust, and that's pr- really not okay because we've had hopes for them. We've hoped that we made a correct decision. And once they break our trust, That's a really hard place to be at. And I mean, this would lead to a situation where we wouldn't even talk about the government. Everyone, the government was created for a reason. Like before governments, before kings and queens, before any of this was there, what happened earlier in the past was the survival of the fittest, the strongest people surviving. And like those days, it was the people that had big bodies and muscles were very strong but now these days if our go- if the government breaks our trust we will not listen to them and then what happens here is the survival of the fittest coming again we just throwing up the government like just throwing it in a garbage can and then we just not care about it and we'll start to act in the way we'd like for people that think that this is actually good it's not, trust me. There'll be a lot of slavery going on. The rich people are the only ones who are going to survive. Right, everyone? Didier, what are your options about this? Yeah. So, the public uh, trust doctrine actually dates back to the Roman Empire, uh, Emperor, just uh, Justinian. And he was actually the one who first formed something similar to this and he stated that by the law of nature there are common things to man the air running water the sea and consequently the shores of the sea so therefore these uh, these resources or the power that the sovereignty of the public that they have or, and the rights they have should be properly protected and not not to be exploited by the government. So that is the main objective of 
uh, the public uh, trust uh, doctor. So when it comes to the constitution, um, constitutions, um, so constitutions role in the public doctrine is that this should ally with the constitution because that is the main law of the country and it should also um, the public doctrine should also ensure that the constitution is being followed by the people and that the government itself is following and implementing the laws uh, properly uh, and the constitution is basically the main function as the trust document. It functions as the main trust document between the public and the government. Therefore, it gets the name Dr. V. And this is signed by the government and by the people during an election. That is also a main role of us, the public, in an election we have a power but we can't really use it because there are, there's a huge population and not everyone can utilize that uh, power because not everyone can go to the parliament there will be so many ideas and there would be a little time um, to take all of them into account but back in greek in ancient greece they would take everyone in to the parliament or into uh, politics but right now we can't do that because there are too many people living uh, or the population uh, or due to population overgrowth so therefore we give our power to certain representatives to do it for us like i said earlier so that is our role in election and after we do elect these certain individuals as our representative, we sign a contract with them, which is the constitution that, uh, that is the main function. Um, that is the main, that, is that function, that is the main document between um, the government and the public as the trust document. So that is our main role in an election so now i would like to hand it over to mevin or to channel to add some more points i will have this uh i uh channel you want to go or should i you go on you go on ahead Mevin. all right so uh adding to uh Going back, actually, to some of uh, what Chanul said as well, uh, if the public trust is uh, is broken and they, we lose hope eventually in them, uh, Chanul said as well that we will go back to uh, what is the olden age, uh, the older ages, uh, going back to kings and queens. Maybe you never know the queens and uh, kings and queens. Uh, we might have to have another war, or it might just be like World War uh, Two. Even there's just once the trust is, because trust is a big thing, right? Without trust, there's pretty much nothing. And when that trust, especially in the government, is broken, and that the trust is uh, is no more we might start to turn against uh, the government. We might form our own groups. Uh, we'll live how we want. Uh, and then uh, gradually wars will start to form. And if the government doesn't uh, have our trust and if they, if they don't, uh, if they don't, how do I say this? If they, if our trust uh, is broken, uh, from the government because of their own actions. The world could turn back into how it was a long, long time ago. And war, uh, there will be another war. World peace would be no more for another while. People will die left and right. So 
the it's the government's duty to to contain the contain and to have our trust and not break it because as i said before trust is a big thing and it's a it's a huge important thing so if they break it our world will almost be a war ground and it's just i have to tell you it is the most unpleasant and the it's something that anyone out there does not want to see so it's the duty of the government to to um to keep our trust anything else dad yeah nevin so now um, just as you explain trust as we have all been trying to explain trust is not something to be taken easily everyone to, should take this seriously because we don't want wars to happen we don't want we don't want missile bombs just raining down on our house do we so it's it's um, the government's duty to make sure that our trust is not broken and kept strongly just like we have managed all these years right and same thing goes up to us because it's also our duty to make sure that we don't put the government in trouble because we if we just keep doing wrong things if we keep doing bad things then the government will have to take action and there are some terrible laws that most people would not like to witness but the government would be left with no other choice but to do so so it will, it can also be a way in a way our problem as well so it's the society's duty as well to make sure that we do the right things so we can keep maintaining that trust that has been kept for many years and many decades so it's our responsibility to and i hope that you will keep remembering this and any more points to add you guys i think you wrapped it up well unless vidhir uh, has anything to add uh not really that basically covers up everything on what the public trust doctrine is so i would like to end the session by leaving all with a quote trust is like a glass but is when you shatter it or when you break the trust you can't really fix it back there will still be some leaks and cracks in some places so just make sure to not to break the glass in the first place sri lanka has been under lockdown we all have had mixed emotions somewhat hurt and not sure really we miss And just like we all have been back with emotions. I want to share a different sense of emotion and positivity that includes not just me but a family of progressive like-minded people who under lockdown just like you decided to be productive despite uncertainty. pushed to being progressive despite resistance and gradually developed a never give up attitude an attitude to challenge our surroundings question our beliefs of the world we live in critic the way we look at things debate the fragments of the media argue as to what education really is and smile at the understanding in satisfaction so that smile was and is worthy a mile of progress we at pufferfish are ready to embrace you into a system of learning the value is not based on how handicap missions are together we improve our aspirations meet inspirations 
form a better self-actualization and progress. For we are people and people make society. And society needs the best and that is you. Empower to be empowered. Empower to be empowered. Empower to be empowered. Empower to be empowered. Empower. To be empowered. Empower.